Imagine we build an addition table. Each cell contains the sum of its row index and its column index. Now pick an odd number, for example, k equals three, and take a square subgrid of side length three inside the table. Add up all the numbers on the border of this subgrid, and then compute their average. The result, it's exactly equal to the number in the center of the grid. Coincidence? Let's try a larger grid with side length five. Repeat the same steps. And again, the average of the numbers on the border matches the central value. It looks like a universal rule, but is it really? If we choose an even side length, for example, K equals four, there is no single central cell. So we define the center as the average of the four middle cells, the two by two square in the middle. And guess what? Even in this case, the average of the boundary values matches this new central value. So far we've used addition, but what happens if each cell contains the product of the indices instead? Surprisingly, it still works. It also works for subtraction. It even works for a formula like x squared minus y squared. But here's the catch. If we change the formula even slightly, for example, to x squared plus y squared, the magic disappears. The result no longer holds. So the natural questions are, why does it work in some cases but not in others? What do the functions that satisfy this mean value property have in common? And what is the deep connection between these simple tables and the mathematics of analysis? Behind all of this lies a fundamental concept, harmonic functions. A function U defined on a region called omega is harmonic if its Laplacian is zero at every point, meaning the sum of its second partial derivatives is zero. Harmonic functions are special because they satisfy an amazing property, the mean value property. In simple terms, the value of u at a point equals the average of u over any ball or any circle centered at that point. Let's look at an example. Take the function f of x and y equals x plus y, which is harmonic. Compute the average value of f over a circle centered at x naught y naught with radius r. The area of the circle is pi times r squared. Switch to polar coordinates, where the Jacobian gives a factor of rho. Integrate first with respect to rho. The sine and cosine terms vanish when integrated from zero to two pi. So the integral simplifies. And after a few steps, the final result is exactly x naught plus y naught. Perfect. The function satisfies the mean value property. Now everything fits together. The functions we used in the tables, addition, subtraction, multiplication, are all harmonic. And that's why their boundary average equals the central value. All of them except one the function x squared plus y squared. Its Laplacian is not zero, and that is why the trick stops working. So what we observed in the tables is a discrete version of the mean value property from the continuous world. And this reveals a deep connection. Every continuous concept has a natural counterpart in the discrete setting. An integral becomes a sum, a sphere centered at point P naught with radius R becomes a square with top left corner at A, B, and side length K. Why the top left corner? Because the center of the grid depends on whether K is odd or even. We can also describe this square as a union of intervals. And when K is odd, it's easy to locate the central cell. Try in the comments to generalize the definition of the center when k is even. Now everything is clearer. Even the simplest problem, a table of sums, can hide a remarkably deep mathematical idea. 
and it shows us that every concept in analysis, even the most abstract ones, has a perfect reflection in the discrete world. Mathematics is truly beautiful.